Hey guys, it's Cyril here, and today we're going to be talking about the importance of making bad drawings and the importance of honestly just like warming up because it can make such a difference to just allow yourself to draw things that just don't really look good, but it's just something to kind of get your nerves out of the way before you like start drawing drawing. So the first drawing is some mushrooms on a log and I wanted to have a more restricted color palette because a lot of the times I kind of just mix a lot of different colors together and I was like, you know, I'm going to really push myself to use only a few. I honestly wasn't really planning on this one to like be the warm up because I thought it was going to be really, really nice because I really like the reference. I was like, I really like drawing mushrooms and has a whole image in my head. But sometimes it just like doesn't really work out that way. I kind of have this expectation for my sketchbook to be super pretty because, you know, you go online, you see a lot of sketchbook tours and they're all like super finished, super polished. And sometimes I get really stressed out when I don't need to be. I'll see sketchbooks of artists online and I just end up comparing myself to them when really, one, you shouldn't, two, a sketchbook is just like supposed to be a place where you practice and kind of learn and I sort of make my sketchbook into a portfolio which isn't a bad thing I would say but where will I practice then, you know? And there's always like the demons or on my shoulder are the demons on my shoulder the angel the devil on my shoulder and one is just kind of like no like don't draw anything that's bad in your sketch everything needs to look perfect and if it doesn't you need to like scrap it and the other is the sketchbook is a place to learn and to could just kind of practice drawing and just let stuff out also because sometimes when people show their more polished sketchbooks online they might not be showing that they have another sketch like that that just dumps stuff into like studies and work in progress things and just like ideas like um some people like don't really show that stuff and it doesn't mean that they don't have those things because even though i have the sketchbook and you know i'm practicing it i have another sketchbook that is just really strange looking doodles that are super quick and it's just like me getting an idea out or just it's super super messy so these green leaves that are on the screen right now is i regretted making it so dark because it just ruins the entire thing i felt like and because it was just way too dark in, in comparison with the other things and i got really confused with how i was gonna layer everything because i start from the lighter highlighter markers and just slowly very slowly bring it down to the darker shades but i started way too early with that darker green and i was like i don't know what i'm doing and i could have stopped i could have definitely stopped but i'm just like i'm gonna push through and try to salvage this because I need a challenge sometimes and not everything is going to end up really, really good. And I was with my friend at the time at the cafe and I kept being like, should I just start over? Should I just start over? And something I've seen people do is that they put a sticky note on the part they don't like and draw over it. And I didn't have a sticky note, which I really wish I did because I would have felt better about continuing, but I really wanted to just push through on this. And in my final attempts to finish this drawing, I just go in with darker colors and I was like, maybe I can add green into the shadow to balance the two, but it just did not look good to me. So I realized, you know what? I had really tried my best and I had got over the like, oh man, like I don't want to make something bad, but I did it. I tried with those colors and now since I had that experience with those colors, I knew where to start when I did my next drawing. Again, I wanted to continue the theme of mushrooms, but this time adding a little character in between just to make it a little bit more fun for me. That was the kind of idea I had in the last drawing where I actually wanted the mushrooms to be like mushroom people maybe, but it just got so out of hand. I didn't really have the space to do that. I also 
kind of regret drawing this like in the corner but i just didn't think i was gonna like this one as much either i kind of assumed that maybe it was gonna be similar to the last drawing where it kind of like went out of hand so i love space to maybe draw like other things but i definitely regret doing that now so again i am trying to use a more reduced color palette I didn't really go with the same colors this time, so it was a little bit more my comfort zone, but I still was trying to contain the range of colors that I was using. And looking at this one now, in comparison with the other one, I definitely knew more how to kind of shade the mushrooms and going about with their shapes, and I don't think I would have had that experience if I hadn't done the last drawing. And that's something that I need to really kind of more drill into myself because even things that aren't sketchbook related, I get so nervous to just draw something that's bad, especially since I've been drawing for a very long time. I feel like I should be better than where I am right now and I beat myself up over it, which I think everyone can just continue to improve and no matter like where their level of drawing is, there's always something that they don't really like drawing or aren't as good at as someone else. But, you know, I we need to just, just draw things. And I definitely feel that another reason why I feel this way is because I'm a little bit in that content brain kind of thing where I feel like everything needs to be shown. And because when I see people post online all the time, I mean, there's no way that they have drawings that they don't like, but they just don't show them. And I always tend to forget that, which is, it's like a given. But I just tend to be way more harder than myself, harder on myself than other people are, but nobody's really looking as intensely as you are. Like, you are your biggest critique. And also, you know, sometimes like people don't really showcase like how much they were drawing before they got to the level that they are now because behind the one really good drawing there's probably like hundreds of studies that this person has done like especially for me like i've done a lot of drawings that i don't really show at all but it's just like me studying and through studying i'm able to like really come up with something that's like really nice and sometimes i'll show someone a drawing that i made and i don't like it but when they look at it they're like wow this is amazing and i realize i'm way more harder on myself than I should be, and I, I definitely suffer from that imposter syndrome. You know, I always feel like I need to be super, super amazing, and I have this idea of something like in my head, when like I've honestly kind of already reached that, but I'm just like so hard on myself, and maybe that's like a cause from the pressure from the people around me, or just like the people online. But honestly, it's just my own expectation that I put on myself that I really need to toss out the window this year. But I love how the drawing turned out and in comparison to that first one, it definitely looks a lot more polished and I probably wouldn't have been able to get there if I hadn't done the first study. And before I left that cafe, I decided to do two more studies of Ethel Kane and Taylor Russell. I was definitely in a lot better mood after finishing the second mushroom drawing because it just looked so much nicer and I had gotten all of my jitters out of the way, the fear of just like doing something bad. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go at it. Let's see, let's see what it brings. So I decided to just get a reference of Ethel that was on her Instagram and just kind of see where it took me. I definitely had a lot of fun with this particular portrait because she had a lot of like shadows going on and I definitely like when there's a very clear definition of shadows in portrait studies because it's just it's a little bit more fun for me and I honestly feel like it's a little bit easier at times it I don't know I just like the crisp edges of like having shadows and stuff and see that's the thing is that this portrait is easier for me i would say because i have done a lot of other portraits before that were not really good i tend to kind of discredit myself which is like why would you do that but i don't really know how to explain that i'm just like so much harder on myself but i need to remind myself that this the where i am now is because of the hard work that i had put in prior 
And at a time, you know, I didn't really like how it was going, but I pushed through. And it definitely wasn't as nice as this particular study. Because I remember when I first started drawing more portrait studies of like real people. Because growing up, I didn't really understand the importance of doing studies at all or anatomy or anything. I just was going at it. So when I first tried to do it, it was really bad. I did not like them and I was struggling so much. And I kind of equated that with my worth because i felt like why why do other artists like they're so good but you know i didn't really think about of course they studied they took their time to really perfect their craft and you know things don't really come easy it doesn't really come easy to everybody like it's just working and trying and just continuing and honestly it's kind of like these are kind of things that seem very obvious but when it comes to when i'm looking at my stuff or so because sometimes i talk with like my friends or artists who kind of feel the same way it's just they feel bad about their own art because it's not up to par as like what their expectations are but it's like also look at the progress that you've made you know and i think because you kind of put all this pressure like for me like when i put pressure on myself to draw i end up not drawing and it makes me even more miserable because then i become scared to draw but it's like that kind of defeats the purpose you know if you're not really making bad drawings then you're not really drawing at all like it's better to draw something than nothing at all and i've gone long periods of time of just not doing anything because i get so rusty and i get frustrated because i'm like i should immediately be good all the time but it's something that you have to just continuously do and that's something I just tend to forget, but I just need to take a step back and look at all the drawings I didn't really like and realize that it all added up into my skill level that I am now. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope my ramblings made sense and I hope to see y'all in the next video. Bye!